Talked a lot about culture here. Um, is this what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I told the team before the game, you know, the only mistake they can make is to not be competitive and not be together. We do those two things, we can live with the results, whether it's a W or L. As long as we're competitive and as long as we're together, you know, and aggressive. That was the third word I used. Um, and they they did just that. You know, they we made a run. They made a run back at us. Game went topsy turvy there for a little little while, and, but we stayed the course. We stayed solid, um, and we had multiple big plays from multiple players. Uh, whether it's getting the defensive stop, getting a big rebound, making the extra pass, big finish, big and one, big shots. Um, it was it was a total team effort, and uh, to do that without you know four of our main pieces. You know, Bron, AD, Lonnie, you know, you have Troy who gets kneed in a thigh and is not able to finish the game. And everybody just banded together and continued to fight. And, and that's what we have to be about. That's what our identity, our identity has to be night in and night out. Just not just sometimes, not just when we're feeling good about ourselves, but no matter what happens, we have to play that way every night. Darvin, you just mentioned the total team effort, but just to zoom in on Dennis for a second, he looked like he got hit in the face in the first half. He rolls an ankle, um, and yet he stays in the game, hits the free throws, seems to make most of the plays down the stretch. What, what did you see from him tonight? Just just the tenacious um, little kid I fell in love with back in Atlanta in 2013, you know, when he came in. His rookie year was our first year in Atlanta, and, um, you know, you could tell he was going to be special just because, you know, he worked, he put the work in. And he was competitive, and he always shined in big moments. And so um, he rolled his ankle. We got in the huddle, and I told him, man, you know, if I see you limping, I'm taking you out. He said, no, nah, leave me in the game. I'll be all right, coach. I'm good. I said, well, be good. And he said, I'm not going to be good. I'm going to be great. It was his exact words to me. And that's why he's here. Um, and he was phenomenal, you know, and, and nothing short of phenomenal. Russ, I mean, Russ coming off with almost a triple-double. Uh, you know, had some unfortunate plays in the first half, but fit, you know, second half, zero turnovers. Uh, a lot of great defensive stop, had some great defensive possessions on Jimmy Butler. Um, all of the guys, man, you know, Austin, fearless, all time inbounder. <laughs> Austin, but just him even getting rebounds. You know, we had guards with multiple rebounds, K9 with three, um, Russ with eight. You know, that's his normal output. Um, Dennis with four, you know, Austin with five, and, and you know, they, they, they thrive off of those second and third opportunities. So for us to hold them to one possession as many times as possible, um, it, it was great. And, you know, we, we mishandled the ball some, but at the end of the day, we, you know, when we needed to make plays, we made them. Darvin, to go back to the inbounds pass, um, obviously, you know, Miami has to foul you. Um, Dennis was, I think, 11 for 13 at that time or something like that. Um, was the was Austin's first option to go to Russ in the paint? Was that sort of to catch them? No, nah, that was like an escape option. Um, and that was a total read. You know, Pat Bev coming over the top. Tom is going like he's back screening, but kind of getting out of the way. Uh, Dennis, you know, Russ actually screening for Dennis and then popping out wide. And Dennis coming up. We wanted to get Dennis the ball and just clear it out and just let him try to blow by and, and go downhill. But, you know, Austin saw fit, and he's, he made the right read. Uh, Russ saw that they were lifted high, the paint, the middle of the paint was wide open. So smart basketball play by him, just going back door, and there's a smart, fearless pass right on the dot by Austin. And, um, you know, that's why he's in that position with the ball in his hands. And just a quick follow-up on Russ. You brought him up. I mean, I think he had seven turnovers in the first half. None in the second, or maybe one at the most. What he was zero in the adjustment? second half. Zero, yeah. yeah. So what do you see in his adjustment there? Just keeping it simple. Um, a lot of a lot of times he's playing fast, and guys, you know, it's just there was what I call competitive turnovers. It's just not him, you know, just holding the ball too long or just making a bad read. All of those plays, I go back and look at them. I say out of those seven turnovers, five of them he's trying to make the right play, and it just didn't work out. But uh, I just think he settled into the game in, in the second half, and the ball touched multiple, multiple hands. You know, he was a screener some. He, he was getting secondary drives, uh, back downs, and, you know, I think he got more aggressive in terms of scoring the ball, which, which also helped us, was a huge boost. But I'm, I'm not worried about Russ. Russ is, uh, uh, you know, he, he's going to be Russ, and 
hit the game from all different angles and, and, and fill up stat sheets and, you know, lock in. I think people saw him. I was most pleased by what he did defensively. You know, the 29, 21, 8, and 9, you know, we've all come accu become accustomed of him doing that. But the three steals and, again, the defensive possessions he had on Jimmy, uh, when Jimmy has got cooking at the beginning of, of the third quarter, and us switching him on to him finally, you know, I think it, it, it slowed Jimmy down a little bit. But who knows? But all I know is the kid defending his behind off, and it's a big reason why we were able to pull this game out. Darren, I think the win makes you all five and five since Anthony went out with the foot injury. And you spoke to us early in, on in that process that there's got to be a ripple effect. There's going to be, you know, uh, a shockwave that goes through when you lose an MVP candidate like that. Um, do you feel like you're past that? And then how does this um, recent stretch make you view life without AD for however long that may continue to last. I just think guy, different guys are selling into their roles. They get more comfortable with more reps, more minutes. Uh, you see Thomas Bryant, you know, just playing like a monster, um, giving us great minutes, giving us a great presence in the paint. Uh, I wish, you know, sometimes they switch off. Teams like to switch. I wish we throw it to the throw, uh, throw the ball to him a little more in the paint when versus those switches. But even if he doesn't get to get it, he's uh, rebounding the switch. He's got a small on him, so he attacks the offensive glass, which is another way you can beat a switch. So it's just different guys stepping up. As simple as that. Juan, Juan, since he's come back from the ankle injury, just been a versatile defender, stopgap type player. Um, just just doing everything we ask of them, making big hustle plays, getting 50-50 balls. And, um, you know, everybody's just stepping up. Troy, Winion, it's going to take a team effort. And what that does is when we do get our big dogs back, whether it's Bron, AD, both of them back, uh, Lonnie as well, it just makes us that much stronger, that much deeper, because now guys have confidence. They have the ultimate confidence because they've gotten the reps. Darvin, uh, you guys have been a bit up and down in crunch times this season. What, what did you see from an execution standpoint tonight, uh, just with you know it being such a close game down down the last few minutes? Us being a little more deliberate. I, mean, I think early on in some of those games, we just were still learning one another. Um, but now, guys really in the huddle, talking right along with me, telling me what they're seeing, what they want to get done out there, which is great. You know, as opposed to them waiting on me to draw up something and they're reading the game now. They're seeing who they want to target in certain offensive actions and they're getting it, getting to it. They're, they're slowing down, being more organized, setting better screens. If the guy pre switches that we're trying to target, first guy slip out, then we bring that guy up and then we attack. We're not settling, we're trying to get to the rim and that opens up things because the defense has to collapse and now you got different options whether it's on under the basket or out at the three-point line. So I just think just being more deliberate with how we attack. Darwin, did Dennis turn an ankle or something on that one play and he kind of yeah. hobbled off? And it, and did it almost seem like he got better after he came back in? I don't know what he did in between, <laughs> but. No, I got on him. He know I'd take him out of the game. So I got think he was just kind of gritting his teeth and trying to act like he wasn't going to limp. And I didn't see him limping. I, I you know, sometimes players like that, you have to save them from themselves. So, I, you know, <coughs> our trainer, Roger, and I, we both agreed, like, if he limps anywhere through this next possession, he's coming out. And uh, we, we, we stood on that and, and saw him. He went out there, he ran around, and then we got a defensive stop, and he started attacking, he didn't limp. And a lot of times when you're adrenaline is pumping like that, you don't feel it. But I'm sure later on the night and morning, <laughs> he's going to feel that. Um, I, I, I felt like it was a – pretty bad twist. I have to go back and look at it on tape. But uh, Kid's just a, 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 a fireball, man, of a competitor. And, and he showed that tonight. Darvin, I, th I think we've heard you say, you know, no one's going to feel sorry for us. I feel like we've heard that, you know, every other day probably as something's come up. But c can you explain just how tough of a challenge it is to, to be on the road for almost two weeks, come back, fly cross country yesterday, come back on tight rest without your guys and, and to play a 48-minute game kind of the way you guys did. And what do you think that says about your the guys that were out there? Just just the way they are able to fill their cups up and, and you know, get the right nutrition, the right amount of rest, and um, not waste that energy and no other space except locking in and trying to get a win. You know, we, we know we've let some games get away from us, some games we should have won. 
And there's nothing we can do about that now, and, uh, you know, outside of just learning from them and trying to be smarter and wiser and, and more locked in as we approach these new games. So um, can't cry over spilled milk. There's water under the bridge, and, and I think we're better for it now. But the schedule is a beast. I mean, it's not just us. It's every team that goes through this. You know, I, I had coaches that I talked to on a regular that called me and complained about the same issues. And, you know, it's less back-to-backs, but it's sometimes that makes for more travel. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, it's nothing that no one else is not going through. So it, it's we just have to, you know, uh, pull up our bootstraps, tighten our belt, belts up, and come out and go hard as we can for 48 minutes and be smart about how we prepare, how much energy we uh, of our guys that we burn off in, in non-game time. And I think we've been smarter about that. We've been getting a lot of a lot of uh, teaching and 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 um, educating of our players through film. And 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 when we have shoot arounds, we kind of more focus on us and things we need to get better at. And no disrespect to any opponent of 29 other teams, but sometimes you just have to look yourself in the mirror and, and do your own personal health checkup as a basketball team before you can go out before the world. And I, we've been doing a good job of that over the past month. Let's go. Yep.